yeah. Looking at my watch and say it's time to get it, yeah. Talking about my goddess every day, I'm with it. Good morning, morning. Kind of early, about 7 o'clock in the morning. This one was on my mind this over the night, and uh, I wanted to get this captured. So, Matthew 15, verse 29 through 39, message is how much proof? How much proof? We see Yahashua in these verses come to an area. And, of course, just like always, he's teaching the word. He's spreading the gospel. He's healing the multitude, right? In this particular case, he left, right? And went up into a mountain and it said a great multitude followed him. The multitude followed him. They cast their sick, their lame, their deaf, their, excuse me, their mute, their blind, all sorts of ailments at Yahashua's feet. He cured them, healed them, right? 4,000 or so people. It was a lot. It was more than 4,000 people. You see that in verse, I believe, 38. Um, and this is where you see him feed the people with, you know, the bread and the fish. It's a very common or popular message or, you know, commonly spoken of miracle that was performed. But when you really unpack these verses, you can get a lot. And honestly, I had never gotten all this that I got this. Well, this morning, really. When I was in that scripture, so I'm going to dig into it. We're going to dig into these things, right? One of the first things we see, okay, he left to be alone. We see Yahashua leave to be alone. He could have left to be alone for a ton of different reasons. Um, maybe just to seek the time with the father. Um, you know, we don't really know. But either way, he set off into a mountain to be alone. Do we do this? As believers, do we do this? Do we take time out to spend with the Father? And I'm not talking about just in the morning in prayer, whatever the case is, but do we take time to get away, isolate ourselves, and just spend time with the Father, seek his face, hear his voice? Do we do that? And if so, how often? We probably need to do it more. So we see Jesus doing that. He's setting the example. Second thing we see here is it said a great multitude followed him. The question that comes to mind for me is how did they know where to find him? <laughs> he, he was leaving to be by himself. But he was followed by a great multitude. Now, they ain't have cell phones and all that stuff, you know. But they knew exactly where to find him. In our day-to-day -day lives, when we're going through, do we know where to find Jesus? Do we know where to find Yahashua? Do we know where to find the Most High? Or do we even think about that? We just try to make our own way. See, this multitude, they were they were smart, right? They understood that Jesus was the way. Or at least they had something he wanted. In another place in scripture, he tells them that what they wanted was the food. They wanted the bread. They weren't coming for the life eternal. But... They knew where to find him. So do we know where to find Yahashua, right? But, okay, so they bring their, their ill, the people with all the ailments. They cast him at Yahashua's feet so he can heal them. He heals them. And he did so much that it says the people marvel. The, the multitude marvel and they glorify God. He's doing Jesus, right? He's doing what he was sent here to do. He's healing the sick, casting out devils, raising the dead. We know his ministry. He's doing what he was supposed to be doing. And he's doing it at a really high level. And we see that in these verses because it say they were there with him on that mountain for three days. They weren't eating for that three days. So for three days straight, he's on the mountain healing the multitude, healing people. So he was doing so much that the people marveled. They were in awe at it, like, you know. Wow. He was using what God gave him, what he sent him here to do. He was operating at such a high level that the people, could, all they could do was marvel and glorify God. The gifts that we've been given, the gift that you've been given, that God, that God gifted you with to do his work. 
are you performing at a high level with it? That's a tough question. Are you performing at a high level? Are you performing at a level that's so high that all people can do is marvel and glorify God? Or are you trying to take the credit for it like your hard work is what did it? We've been given these gifts. Our ability isn't of our own efforts, right? Some stuff comes by hard work and all that good time stuff. But really, really ask yourself, are you performing in your gift in such a high level that all people can do is glorify God? Jesus is bringing people to the most high through his gift. Something else we see. Okay, so he heals the multitude and it's time for them to leave, right? He's telling them to go. He tells the disciples to feed him because he said if they don't feed him, they've been fasting for three days. They've been there with him for three days. If they don't feed him before they leave, he said they'll faint. Literally, they'll faint on their journey before they make it back to wherever they're going. So he tells the disciples to feed him and the disciples are asking like, what are we going to feed him with? Here's another thing you see. These are Jesus' disciples. They've been traveling with him. They've seen him raise the dead. They've seen him walk on water. They've seen him turn water into wine. Well, I don't know if they were there for that or not. Anyway, they've seen him healing sick. We we talking about things that, you know, <laughs> you couldn't fathom being done. But they're questioning, how are you going to feed all these people? We are like the disciples in that way, right? How so? It's because when we look at or think about our lives and think about all the things that God has done for us, all the things that Yahashua has done for us, anytime something happens, or whenever we get into a tribulation or whatever, we look like the disciples. How are you going to get me out of this? <laughs> We're talking about the creator of everything. Everything there is was created by him. Right. And we're talking about his son and his Holy Spirit. And we're questioning how are you going to feed 4000 people. <laughs> he created the universe. Right. The disciples are asking, how are you going to feed these people? What, what, what? We ain't got enough. It just shows you how limited our thinking is. And it's troublesome, right? Because they're walking with Yahashua. They're walking with the example. They see the way. And they still have a lack of faith. I ain't going to say doubt or disbelief or unbelief. I can imagine that would be a part of it. Because for real, I mean, I'm a human too, right? So you're gonna be asking some questions. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna be asking some questions. So they're asking them, Yo, how you gonna feed all these people? And he, give me the bread. We're gonna we're gonna bless this bread. We're gonna break it. Fed all the people, and there was baskets full left. Right? We are like the disciples in that way. The Lord can deliver us from any trial. He can deliver us from anything we're going through. And in a lot of times what we're going through is because of something we've asked for and we're being developed or we're there's a lot of different reasons for trials. I ain't going to get into all those different. We ain't going to get into that right now. Right. But anyway. When the impossible seems to come up in our lives, the things that we can't grasp, we can't wrap our head around. We question God as if he can't do it. As if he can't bring us through, the creator of all. How ignorant can we be? How stupid can we be? Right? And the disciples of all, they're walking with him and they're falling to this trap too. Right? So we see that in these verses. So Jesus heals all of them up. Feeds them so they can travel and get home safe. And uh, sends them on about their way. Something else that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this thing, right? is our gifts. See, Jesus was, of course, using his gifts, what he was given by the Most High, serving the Most High, bringing people to him. 
right? Now, there's a place in Scripture, Jeremiah 48 and 10, where it tells us that if we don't or if we deal or do the Lord's work with deceitfulness, deceitfulness there in the Hebrew meant with lackness, lazy, with the slack hand. So we have a gift. He's, been, he's given us a gift. If we are you know, supposed to be operating in our gift, but we're doing it or doing his work with the slack hand, we bring a curse on ourselves. So some of the stuff we're going through is because we ain't using our gifts right. See, we've been given these gifts to do his work, and instead we're doing whatever else we're doing with it, right? Instead of putting it to work to bring people to the most high God, we doing whatever, right? Or we're lazy with it. We're supposed to be serving the ministry. We're supposed to be giving these gifts back to God to serve him. And instead, we either lax with it or we ain't using it at all, bringing a curse on ourselves. See, everything that happens ain't from the enemy. Some of it is because of you. Some of it is because of me, right? Probably the majority of it is because of our own faults and not because of somebody coming against you or somebody else. Most of the stuff, man, I, I'm willing to bet that it's our own faults, not using our own gifts, bringing curse on, curses on ourselves, being carried away in our own lusts, our own desires and being tempted, that sort of thing. We set ourselves up for all this stuff, you know, but uh, we got to get in the scripture, man. We got to learn these things and arm ourselves up. I say that loosely. We got to correct our walk. We got to correct our walk. We really got to self-examine and understand what is your gift? What have you been put here to do? Right. And if you don't know, ask them, figure it out. And if you do know, when are you going to start using it to serve God? When? Like, how long is it going to take? You're going to keep bringing these curses on yourself. Right. I pray people hear this thing. I really do. I really hope you all hear this thing. And I pray that. Not only do you hear it, but it really sits in your heart. It takes root that, you, that you're that good ground. Right. And it bears fruit. Basically, you do the works of the Lord and you bring more people to him. And. Uh, man, live this thing, how we supposed to live this thing. So that was uh, on my mind for this morning. Uh, I hope you guys hear that message and uh, I hope you don't hear it with joy, but you hear that thing and really chew on it, understand it, go to the scriptures. Again, Matthew 15, 29 through 39. And uh, the other one I mentioned was Jeremiah 48 and 10. Understand those scriptures, man. See what he's saying. But uh, Heavenly Father, I pray this morning, this day, that your people hear your voice, that your people heed your word, and that it, they don't deal in your business with a slack hand with slothfulness, Father, but with diligence, understanding, and perseverance. May you bring them through whatever trials they may be having, Father. Truly put it on their hearts what they ought to do. Show them their gifts, Father God. Show us our gifts. May we be the people that bring more to you, more souls to you, Father. May they look at us and marvel. And glorify the God of Israel. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praying for y'all, man. Um, hey, go in peace. Much love. Later. Like a fool in it. Do you want more? Yeah, I thought so. Hey, like they don't know what to do with it. Get it. They can all get it. Going hard, never soft with it. I ain't I ain't worried long as God in it. I'ma do it cause my God did it, yeah. He did it, he did it. He did it, he I did just, it. I just hope that you get it. Just hope that you get it. If I said it, I meant it. You know that I